In this video, we're going to execute an engine start of the F-15E Strike Eagle from Razban. Alright guys, I promised myself I wasn't going to do a startup video, but uh, I think for the Combat Ready series, I, I have to. I know there's a ton of other startup videos. I won't be brokenhearted if you don't watch this one. I will say, however, this one is based off of talking to Natsu, who was an actual F-15 Wizzo and uh, spent some years in this aircraft, so he is familiar with the procedures. We, we got together. Maybe you've seen that video if I've posted it already at this time. Uh, but this is uh, kind of coming from him. So I'm going to go step by step through the setup and we'll get this bad boy going. All right, so I'm a lazy airline pilot and I like my flow, so I'm gonna start over here on the left. First thing I'm gonna do is click on this mic switch so we can talk to the ground crew. Then I'm gonna look underneath the throttle to our lighting. I'm gonna move the position lights to three and I'm gonna flip on that anti-collision light. That way the aircraft's going to uh, be lit up once we start the engines and that way the uh, ground crew knows. So of course we don't have any ground crew in DCS, uh, but for your immersion factor, you could go ahead and turn on those lights. All right, we'll go up here to the inlet ramp, switch those to auto. We're gonna go gas, or uh, cast, I should say, on, on all three of those channels. We'll slide over here to the right, to the engines, and we're gonna turn on the generators. We're gonna turn on the engine controls, turn on the engine master, turn on the starter. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we can reach up under here on this panel, you can see the air conditioning. We can turn that to manual or auto. All right, so once we've done that, now we can turn on the jet fuel starter, which is right here. Now we can rotate it left to right. This is basically two different bottles. Uh, I've heard some people try to say that, well, if you do this one, you get more. It's 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 not that's not the way not so explained it. It's basically two different uh, bottles of of compression that you can use to start the engine. So we're just going to keep it right here. We're going to hit the uh, left mouse button and pull that, and we can hear the uh, jet fuel starter get cranked up. Looking down here, we can see that light has turned green. That tells us we're ready to start the engines. We're gonna start engine number two. And all we're gonna do is look here at the finger lift. We're gonna pop that up, release. And we're gonna pay attention to this display here. So as the engine starts to spool up, it's gonna generate a little bit of power. See the aircraft starting to shake. And that display should come to life. There it is, we're gonna watch the RPMs. I wanna get to about 25%. We're going to go ahead and crack the throttle to idle. So there it is, 25. I'm going to bring that throttle idle. And there we go. And just continue to monitor. All right, so the engine's kicking in. We're just going to continue to monitor the RPMs and the temperature, look for any hot starts or hung starts, and we should get uh, stabilized at about 72%. You can hear that air conditioning kicking on, which will get rid of the, uh, the flow message there. Continue to observe. Just make sure nothing is erroneous. And there we go, stabilized, about 72%. Now, without delay, uh, we, we have some time with the jet fuel starter. Uh, but uh, Natso did tell me after time it can actually catch fire. So uh, there's no reason to wait. We're going to do the same process. We're going to hit that finger lift. And we're going to observe. We're going to wait for about 25% on the uh, RPMs. And it will crack the throttle to idle. Hi, there's 25 Bring that throttle forward and to idle. Now you'll see that I'm moving it forward quite a bit and then back. You don't need to do that. I'm doing that because obviously this dead zone between the idle and close doesn't exist on my hardware setup. So I've got to, it's basically all the way back. I've got to push it forward and then bring it right back to all the way back. So it's not hurting anything. It's not going to mess up with the, uh, mess up the aircraft at all. So don't worry about that. All right, same deal. We're going to observe. Now, of course, it's DCS. We're not going to get a hot start. We're not going to get a hung start. We could go and do other things. But again, for immersion, we're just going to pay attention to the engines, make sure that they spool up, and then we'll continue the process. It really doesn't take that long. All right, so our engines are on. They're stabilized. I'm going to go ahead and close the canopy. And while I wait for that, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the... Well, okay, we'll lock it. I'm going to turn on the pitot heat and the windshield heat. And again, like I said, flows. So now we're going to flow from right to left. So I've turned on the anti-ice. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the oxygen. That'll get rid of that message there. Go ahead and put on the brake hold. And then I'm just going to start turning on all the gizmos and gadgets. 
So we'll turn on the HUD brightness, the display brightness. Don't forget to turn on the radios. We got the uh, uh, MPDs on. We'll go over here. We can set our altimeter. If we've got ATIS already plugged in, we can be listening to ATIS right now, getting that stuff going. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this standby. Okay. And continue back down. And I'm going to go ahead and pop these to standby. If we were using Navflare, we could pop that to standby. And then we're going to do the dreaded INS align. So make sure, again, that your brake hold is on. In the real world, this isn't necessarily required, but at least as the time of making this video, uh, it is. So make sure that that's on, which is part of our flow. Now we're going to take this INS switch. We're going to go to GC align. We're going to look up here and it says no taxi. We're going to go right here and click this button and this button. This is going to take this information and input it into the... Uh, system. You can also look on your knee board and be able to put those uh, numbers in manually, but I have found that whatever numbers pop in there, as long as you hit that, uh, you're good to go. So we'll continue to observe, and uh, eventually this will start to count down. Now while we wait for that, we can jump into the back seat and set up a few things there. Alright, so I'm no uh, wizard in the back seat at all. I've spent zero time back here, but I know how to turn some stuff on. So we'll go ahead and turn on the uh, displays. And we'll go ahead and turn on the targeting pod, turn on the laser. We can uncage our attitude indicator. And we can turn on our ICS, RWR, and our EWWS. Now these, I'm told, don't actually do anything. You can switch to manual auto, it doesn't really matter. Here we're going to go ahead and turn our dispenser. I'm going to put it to manual only because I like to have control. Of course we can arm our seat. That's pretty much all we need to do, especially if we're just doing single pilot. Half of the stuff we don't really need to set up, uh, but we'll jump back into the front seat. All right, so back in the front, we can see that that no taxi's gone away. We've got the uh, GC gyro compass 15.5, and, and if we were to sit here and watch this, it's going to count down just like it did there, 12.9. It's going to continue to filter down. This is our, uh, our basically our position accuracy. And once we get GC okay, then we'll be good to go with the alignment. All right, so while we wait for the alignment, uh, we can be doing all of the other things we need to do to set up our systems. We could be loading our bombs, uh, making sure that the uh, T-Pod comes to life. We could program our uh, MPDs. And we've talked about this in other videos. Uh, this is going to take some time. It's not really the point of this video, so I'm going to skip over that. You can see those other videos and, of course, watch other content creators who've talked about that as well. But for anyone who says, oh, you should do the alignment as soon as possible, I, I get it, but it only takes about four minutes, and you're going to spend four minutes setting everything up. So, so don't rush to failure. Just take your time. Uh, one thing I will definitely do, though, is go to data, and I'm going to turn on my radar altimeter and my ground speed. And we can see that those show up here on the HUD. Now, as I've talked about previously with INS alignment, in the real world, uh, depending on kind of the status of the alignment, you don't really want to move the aircraft. So if you've been having problems with alignment, what I would say is wait for the alignment to be completed before you load any weapons. Uh, I wouldn't even really touch the controls. Now, how much of this stuff is really modeled, I don't know, uh, but better safe than sorry. So I always take my feet off the pedals. Uh, I'm not touching any of the controls. And I'm certainly not going to try and taxi until I get that GC okay. So don't be in a rush. Uh, I think there's probably faster ways to do the alignment if you're uh, in a rush. Uh, I don't know them. This is the basic alignment, and that's what we're going to cover. All right, so we've got uh, GC okay, which means our alignment is complete. So I'm just going to look back down here at the INS knob and rotate that to the right to nav. Uh, we did skip over the JTIDs. As I understand it, it's not really doing anything. You can turn it to norm, but it's not operational. Uh, at least at this point. So now we can get set up for takeoff. What we can do is go ahead and turn the radar to on because it's got a weight on wheels. It's not going to radiate. Again, there's no one out here anyway, but uh, even if there was, it, it doesn't matter. It's not going to radiate until we get uh, weight off of wheels. I'm going to go ahead and set my flaps, which I've got mapped somewhere else, but the flap switch is kind of hard to see. In fact, it's almost impossible to see. It's on the far side. It's a tiny little switch on the far side of the throttle. Uh, so I would recommend having that map somewhere else. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop my flaps. And of course we want to arm our seat. And now we are ready to go. The last thing we need to do is remove the chocks and then release the brakes. So we turn on that mic switch. Again, that's part of our flow so that we can call. If you're calling and no one's answering, check your mic switch or you could open the canopy back up and yell. I don't know why we can't just do hand arm signals. Uh, that would be a cool addition. So I'm going to go ahead and call the ground crew and have the chocks removed. Chief, remove the wheel chocks. Wheel chocks are now removed. 
All right, chocks are removed. I'm going to go ahead and take off the parking brake. And we are ready to go. All right, so while we're taxiing out, we can go ahead and set the takeoff trim. There's a little button over here. And we're just going to press and hold until we get that yaw rate and that beeping sound. Now, I will tell you that I've taken off many times without setting the takeoff trim. She'll take off just fine. Uh, in fact, sometimes I even have better takeoffs without setting the takeoff trim. So uh, don't uh, freak out if you didn't set that. Otherwise, the aircraft is ready to go. Of course, again, like I said, we'd spend a lot of time setting up our weapons, making sure that the pod is active, making sure that everything's set up. Uh, I'm going to just have an air-to-air -air radar up, my HSI, and we'll pull up a TSD. I'm not planning to do much after I take off, really just for the purpose of the video. Uh, I've not figured out the best sort of set of programs, uh, and even not so said, you know, it, it's kind of just dependent upon you. So whatever works for you, uh, but I definitely think having an air-to-air -air radar and having it up air-to-air -air mode uh, gives you enough navigation data that you don't need to go into nav mode. All right, so we're approaching the runway. We'll take a look. No traffic. And we'll get lined up for takeoff. All right, so confirming our clearance and our runway. We're on runway 2-2. Two, two. Altimeter set. Seats hot. Flaps are down. Takeoff trim is set. Go ahead and take the runway. I'll go ahead and just take it on the roll. Use that high gain nose wheel steering, which is located at the base of your stick. Go ahead and bring the power in. Maintain lane alignment. And basically, we're just looking for about 170 or so knots, and we'll rotate. All right, there it is. All right, positive rate. Gear's coming up. Flaps are coming up. We want to have all that stuff up by 250. You can see the radar is now radiating because of the weight off of wheels. I'm going to start pushing a little bit of trim down to fight that takeoff trim. Like I said, you can actually uh, just take off without it. It's perfectly fine. And pull it out of burner. And there we go. Go out on a leisurely flight or to put warheads on foreheads, whatever it is. Uh, that is the basics of getting this aircraft ready to go. Again, I've done several other videos in this series to talk about how to set up the navigation, how to set up the weapons, uh, the targeting pod. There's still other things that I want to cover. Uh, but like I said, I felt obligated to make this part of the series for those who, uh, you know, I don't know, just wanted my version of it. So here you go. Enjoy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you.